Brian Murphy. Let's talk about apparatus placement on TCs. See how many things are affected by poor apparatus placement and how the call can become disorganized and confusing at best and downright dangerous at worst. First, note the positioning of the rig. The engine has pulled past the incident and lined up straight with the accident. This is not effectively blocking the scene. Next, notice that the engine's wheels are straight. If struck, this will allow movement into the scene. The ambulance arrives next, but spots to the rear of the incident. This does not take advantage of the engine's position and leaves the ambulance loading area vulnerable and exposed. Finally, the squad comes in and blocks the street. If the squad pulled past the scene, this could prove to be an effective way to eliminate traffic. However, in this scenario, all the squad did was block the truck from having optimal placement for extrication. The car hit the fire department's EMT captain so violently and smashed the vehicle's windshield and sent him flying through the air. A man who was focused on the safety of firefighters ended up needing medical help himself. Let's try it again with some changes. This time, the engine fully blocks the scene, providing for maximum protection of personnel, and turns the wheels away from the incident. You will notice that the engine is angled, with the pump panel protected from oncoming traffic. Next up, notice the ambulance pulls past the scene. This allows the patient loading area to be protected. The squad then follows and pulls to the very front of the scene. This leaves the truck enough room to position for possible extrication. Keep in mind, this is but one example of a possible scenario. It is simply not possible to have a definitive set of rules that apply to all scenes. But with a little forethought and a firm grasp of some basic principles, apparatus positioning could be an effective way to mitigate danger on traffic collisions. Hi, I'm Bob Beers. Let's talk about rig placement for structure fires. In this scenario, the engine arrives first and takes an inside spot. This allows the firefighter to pull the appropriate line without interfering with the ingress of incoming units. The quint arrives next and chooses an outside spot. Because this is a two-story building, the outside spot lends itself to a better ladder angle. The outside spot also keeps the truck operations out of the way of engine operations. The turntable is placed at the AB corner. Notice that the trailer is angled out. This allows for ground ladders to be removed from the trailer should another unit park directly behind the truck. The squad arrives next and parks appropriately just out of the operational area. The ambulance arrives last and also parks appropriately out of the operational area. To review, remember that you should correctly spot your apparatus the first time. Once you're blocked in, there's no respotting until units start getting released. By that time, there's probably no need to respot your rig. In order to spot your rig correctly the first time, you'll need to know your district, your route, and your assignment. It's sometimes acceptable to respot your apparatus as situations and conditions change. There's nothing worse than thinking to yourself that this isn't the best spot for me. As an operator, always anticipate the worst case scenario and ask yourself, if I park here or if I spot here, what's the worst thing that could potentially happen? Hi, I'm engineer AJ Cleveland. This next segment is EMS calls and proper rig placement. For many of us, the medical rescue has become routine, but the placement of apparatus should always be in a fashion that facilitates a safe position and one that also expedites easy and quick transport. For some operators, the piece of equipment that you're driving is likely not directly involved in the medical call. The priority should be given to the ALS unit or squad. The address on the curb is visible for other units. Consider shutting your rig off based on where your patient is. If you as an engineer or an operator are not directly involved in patient care, help other units locate and direct based on access. If you are anticipating being on scene for an extended period of time and your emergency lights are on, consider using the fast idle option. Make sure that you and your crew have plenty of room to get out and that you have access to the compartments that are needed for patient care. When you're one of the last units to arrive on the scene, whether medical or any other type of call, you may also be one of the first units to leave. Consider that and position yourself to be able to leave and be available for additional calls. 
If the vehicle that you're operating is not directly involved in the activities of the emergency, then ask yourself, is this the best spot for me?